Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. A while back I showed you guys how to make these awesome flower pendants using several different kinds of check beads. And in that video I also told you how you can add the Latisse ring band to the same flower that I showed you how to make and you would end up with a really awesome ring. Now I know that these rings here are quite large and not everybody likes large rings. And since it's been a while since I've done a ring video I thought that I would show you guys how to make another ring a flower ring that is a lot smaller so this is what the rings look like they are a lot smaller compared to these here and if you look at these rings you might notice for example this one here looks like this one so what I did is I played around with the different beads that I had and I found that to get the best looking flower the best beads to use are the six millimeter top drilled lintels and the check petal beads and that is the best uh, looking flower that you can get with those kinds of beads so what I did is I just took leftover beads that I had for making this flower and I made a matching ring to go along with the pendant which is what a lot of you can do if you've already made these pendants. So if you've already made these pendants you'll have leftover beads and you can just make a matching ring to go along with your pendant. Now if you've never seen this pendant, if you're new to this channel, um, I will leave a link down there in the description bar so you can learn how to make the pendants down there. And if you don't know where to get these lintel beads or the petal beads, I'm also going to tell you uh, where to get those at in a little bit. So now you can see that I have the ring on. It's pretty small. I love the size of it. It's perfect. And it's actually really close in size compared to my rose ring. I wear this ring all the time. It's a very comfortable ring to wear. Now I'm going to show you the size comparison from what I have now and what I did in the past. Um, I like both rings. The, bo the hugeness doesn't bother me because of how awesome the ring is. It's a really cool ring. But for those of you that have really small hands, I know that you would prefer to have a smaller flower ring. Now, these rings are very simple to make. They're not hard to make at all. And um, I know that you guys are really going to enjoy them. I did the Latisse band on all of them. And this one here, I really loved the beads that I used for the flower. But I didn't have any seed beads to match the flower. So what I did is I just did the colors that the leaves and the rest of the plant would be, which is green and brown. And I ended up with this flower. And I think it looks cool. I'm really happy with it. Alright, so now I'm going to tell you where you can get these beads at. I told you where you can get them at in this video, but if you didn't see that video, then you don't know where you can get them at. But if you're lucky, if you already did the pendant video and you have leftover beads, then you can use those beads to make a matching ring to go along with your pendants. So where can you get the lentils from? Well, a few places that I bought mine from are from Lima Beads. Uh, these ones here are from Lima Beads. Some of these green ones are from Lima Beads. Um, a second place that I've gotten them from is at Potomac Beads. These ones here are from Potomac. They're so pretty. I love that pink. And, um... The other place that I've got them from is from Sugar Gems. They don't have an online store right now, though. They are located in Arkansas. But as soon as they get their store up and ready, because they are currently working on an online store, I will let you guys know so you can go and get some of their awesome beads. Um, another place that you can get these 6mm check lentils at is at Beadaholic. And while you're there, you can also pick up the petal beads. So I'm going to open this box. Just about all of these petal beads are from Beadaholic. Um, these ones here are from Lima Beads. And I wish I bought more of them because I just love them so much. They're so awesome. But uh, yeah, all of these here are from Beadaholic. These ones are from Beadaholic. This blue one here is from Potomac Beads. I did notice though when I bought from Potomac, I got more in a strand than I did from uh, Beadaholic. And I think I got two packs of each color. I think there's like 25 beads on a strand from Beadaholic, but uh, I want to say that the Potomac beads uh, sold more. I just seem to have more of them. So yeah, 
If you want, you could just go to Beeholic and get the petal beads and the lintel beads at the same time. But, uh, you know, different stores have different colors, so it's up to you. I think that with Beeholic, though, you could spend $25 and get free shipping. So that would be really easy to do, to pick out what beads you want. And if you want, you can get matching seed beads uh, to go with them, too. That would very easily raise up your uh, bill to 25 bucks so you can get free shipping. So again, those are some of the places that I've gotten my lentils from and my Czech petal beads. Here is the list of materials you will need to make a beaded flower ring. You will need 3 feet of either 8 pound or 10 pound monofilament. I'm using 10. You will need 10 of seed beads in 2 to 3 colors. I'm doing 2 colors for this ring. You will also need 5 6 millimeter Czech glass top drilled lentils. And if you don't already have these beads and you need to buy them, uh, pay very close attention when you go to buy them because they also come in two holes and four holes and we just want the one hole there on the side. You're also going to need five 6 by 8 millimeter check glass petal beads. This is what it looks like from the top, from the side, and from the bottom. They're a really unique shaped bead. You're also going to need fine pointed tweezers. These help us get out of a tricky spot if we get stuck or we can't pass through. They just help us get through. Okay, so this is the list of materials you're going to need. I always put the list of materials down there in the description bar so you can see it all in writing. And also remember, I'll put the link down there for the pendant if you didn't see that video yet. So make sure you check that out. So the first thing we have to do is straighten out our monofilament. And whenever you work with monofilament, you might notice that it's curled up. Uh, it's really easy to do this. All you have to do is hold the monofilament in one hand and with your other hand, put the monofilament between your two fingers and pull it really fast between your fingers all the way to the other end. And what this does is it heats up the monofilament and it straightens it out so it's much easier to work with. Uh, the faster you pull it through, the hotter it gets and the straighter your uh, monofilament would be. Okay, so I just do this a couple times to straighten out, okay? Uh, so once you get straightened out, you're ready to work with it. Um, another tip I want to give you guys, if you make something with monofilament and you mess up and you have to take it apart and your monofilament's all wavy and twisted and, you know, out of shape, all you have to do is what I just showed you. You can re-straighten it out again just by pulling it between your fingers and it makes it straight again. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is pick up five seed beads and I colored the ends of my monofilament with permanent markers but uh, the red one here always fades out fast so that one's probably going to be clear in no time. The first thing I'm going to do is pick up five seed beads. I have three, four, five. Okay, I have five picked up. I'm going to crisscross my strings through the fifth seed bead. So like that. I'm putting my ends together bringing this one seed bead down to the center of my string just like that and now I have what looks like this okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my strings I'm right handed so I'm gonna do it on the right side I'm gonna pick up one seed bead I'm gonna pick up one lintel slide that down and I'm going to pick up a petal bead and I'll zoom in some so you can better see this when you pick up the petal beads, you have to pick them up in a certain way, so they're all laying in the same direction. But the first one you pick up, it does not matter what direction you pick it up in. You just have to follow this one after you pick this one up. The direction is laying. The other four that we add, we have to follow the direction that the first one's laying in, so they're all laying in the same direction, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just picking up the petal bead, sliding that down. I already have a seed bead, lintel petal bead. I'm going to pick up another lintel. I'm going to hold this between my fingers. I'm going to pick up another seed bead and I'm going to cross my other string through these two seed beads. So through the lintel and through the seed beads we are crisscrossing our string, bringing this down. Okay, and now we have what looks like this. So the string that's right here on the inside of my flower I'm going to take that string, 
and this one is actually the red one. And I'm going to pass through this C bead right here, the next C bead, okay? So pull that through and pull it tight. So now the next petal bead I pick up has to be laying in the same direction that this one is. And this one here is pointing up, okay? So pulling this tight, I'm taking this string right here that's on the outside, and that one is black, and I'm going to pick this petal bead up. And I need to make sure that it's laying in the same direction. So this one here is turned up, and this one's turned up. So I'm just going to pick it up like this, slide it down, and you want to make sure that it's laying in the same direction. So as you can see, it's correct. They're both laying with the uh, turned up, the, the tip of the petal turned up, okay? So now the next thing to do with the same string, this outside string here, I'm going to pick up one lintel and one seed bead, and I'm going to take my other string and I'm going to crisscross through these two beads. Okay, just like that, and pull this all down. Okay, so now we have what looks like this. Now I'm going to take this string here on the inside, pull it tight. I'm going to take this string, and I'm going to pass through my next C bead. So I'm exiting out this one right here. I'm going to pass through this one, the next one beside it. Okay. So now we are ready to add more beads. So make sure you pull this tight, lay this down. When you have this laying down, you go to pick up your next bead. It's kind of easier to see what you're doing so you don't get confused. Okay, so right now all these petals are turned up. This is the top of my flower. So I'm going to pick this petal up so it's pointing up in the same direction. Let that slide down. Make sure it's correct. Yep, it's correct. Now I'm going to pick up a lintel and a seed bead and I'm going to crisscross through these two beads here okay just like that pull it down now sometimes you have to pay attention because when you go to pull this bead down the last lintel you just did will go inside like like that it will go on the inside of the flower see how I just did that so make sure that your petals are all standing out like that okay so this is what my flower currently looks like all right now what I got to do is reposition this string right here it's exiting out of that seed bead so I'm going to take the string on the inside and I'm going to pass through this next seed bead right there just like that pull that through Okay, so now we are ready to add more beads. So you can see my string there, and here's my other string. Okay, pull this tight before we add any more. I'm going to lay this down. This is what it looks like so far. I have to make sure that my petals are laying in the same direction as these here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that petal up. Slide that down. Look at it. Make sure it's laying correctly. And it is, it's turned up just like the rest. Okay, so once that's done, the next thing to do is to pick up a lintel and a seed bead and crisscross both of my ends through it. Just like that. And pull these two beads down. Okay. Pull it tight, make sure that all the lintels are laying properly, and it all looks pretty good. So the next thing we do is we we have to do is to close this up some because we're now have added all of our seed beads in the top. So I'm going to take this string on the top, which currently is my black one, and I'm going to pass through this seed bead here. Okay, the one there in the middle. Pull that through. And then I'm going to take the same string and I'm going to pass down through this seed bead and out through the lintel on the bottom. Okay, so pulling that through, just like that. Now we have what looks like this, okay? So now both of our strings are exiting at the bottom. So what I have to do is pick up our last lintel. 
So I'm going to lay my flower down the way it's supposed to be. And I have my petal bead laying the way that I need it to be connected to my flower. So I'm going to take my strings and I'm going to pick the petal bead up because I need to make sure that you know that it's laying in the right direction when I crisscross through it. Okay. Pick it up, pull it down, pulling it tight, and this is what it looks like. Okay. All of these petal beads are sticking out the bottom. And when I put my base on the bottom of the flower, they're all going to be pointing up just like this here. So make sure that all your petal beads are in the same pointing in the same direction. And once they are, once you know that you have it correct, mine is correct, then you're ready to move on. If you did pick this up and it's pointing the other way, all you have to do is just take it off and turn it around. Okay? So this is tight. Make sure it stays tight. The next thing to do is to pick up five seed beads. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? I'm going to crisscross my strings through the last one. And I'm going to bring it down. When you pull it down, make sure that your seed beads go over the petal bead like this because when they do that's what's making the petal turn up in the direction that we need it to be okay so now I'm gonna hold it like this now the thread that's pointing towards the flower not down away from it but towards the flower I'm going to take that string and this one is the black one and I'm going to pass through this petal bead right here so here you can see I have this string I'm holding on to. My string's exiting out right here. I'm taking that string and I'm passing through the next petal bead. Okay. I'm pulling this through. Just like that. That's what it looks like. Okay. The next thing to do is to pick up more seed beads. So now I'm just going to lay this back down. Instead of picking up five this time, I'm going to pick up four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I got four. I'm going to crisscross to the fourth one and bring that down. Pull it tight and this is what it looks like. Okay, so holding it here, I'm going to take this string. It's the red one, this one here that's on the inside of my flower and I'm going to pass through the next petal bead just like that okay make sure you pull the thread through sit this back down and now I have to pick up four more seed beads three and four I'm going to crisscross my strings through this one and bring this down and again, every time you pull it down, you have to make sure that it's on the back of your petal, like this. Because sometimes when you pull it down, it wants to go like that, on the top of your petal, and that's uh, messing up your flower there. You want it to sit just like this, okay? So all of our petals are being pushed up. So this is what it looks like so far. Here's the top. This is the bottom. I'm going to hold it just like this. I'm taking the string again on the inside and I'm going to pass through the next petal bead. Okay, so exiting out the seed bead, passing through this petal bead. Okay, once that's done, I'm sitting it back down. My strings are curling up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this string right here, exiting out of the seed bead, and I'm going to pick up four seed beads. And then I'm going to crisscross through the fourth one, just like that. And I'm bringing this bead down. Okay. So now we have what looks like this. Pulling this tight, you could see that my seed beads are making the petals stand up when you look at the ring from this angle. But the one here that does not have seed beads around it is 
pointing in the wrong direction, okay? So this is the last petal I have to do. So I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to take this string that's on the inside. I'm going to, and it's the red one, by the way. I'm going to pass through this petal, the very last petal, just like that, okay? Pull this through. I'm going to turn it this way because I'm right-handed. And I'm going to pass the same red string the one we just went through the petal with, through this C bead here. This is the first C bead we'd added. Okay. I'm going to pass through that C bead just like that. Okay. Pull the string through and pull it tight. I like to pull it side to side, left and right. Okay. Now the last thing to do for the base here is to pick up our three C beads and crisscross through both, or should I say through all three of these. You know, we were just crisscrossing through one, but now that I'm picking up my last three, I'm going to crisscross through all three of them. And I'm going to bring them down just like this and pull it tight. So now we have what looks like this. All of our petals are pointing in the correct direction and this is what the bottom looks like. Now what I have to do is to take my strings here and I have to reinforce the bottom of this so all the C beads are fitted together better and so that the petals just sit uh, better on the ring. Okay. So right now you can see I have these two st strings here exiting on the sides of these three C beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my strings, this is the red one, I'll recolor this after this section of the video, and I'm just going to pass through these C beads here on the side. Okay, I'll try to do three of them at a time. If you push the middle one down, you can get through all three of them like that, okay? So pull that through, I'm going to go through these three over here also. Okay, just like that, pull that through. So right now I'm straight across from where I crisscross through these three beads. So I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to take my other string and I'm going to pass through the C beads on this side. Okay, so this is my black string, just went through three there, pull that through. I'm going to pass through these three here, okay, and pull this through. Now pull both of your strings tight, okay, and now we have what looks like this. Both of our strings are exiting out right here. Now we have to get in position to add our ring band, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of my strings, doesn't matter which, I'll take this one over here and I'm going to pass through one C bead, not through all three, just one. Okay, just through that one there, passing through there. Now I'm going to take my other string and I'm going to pass through two C beads. Through these two, right there, okay. Pulling both strings tight. Now we have what looks like this. Okay, you might be wondering why I'm doing it this way. I'm doing it this way. So when we go to put the ring on, it sits like this on our hand. Because when I put it on, as you can see, it kind of looks like a star. This, this is the top point. These are the two bottom points. If I didn't do it that way, if I just crisscross out of the three beads, it would be crooked on my finger. It would be like that on my finger. It wouldn't look that nice. So to make it straight and perfect on the finger, I found out to uh, cross through those beads there the way that I had showed you. Okay, now we have to do the ring band. So this is what we've done so far. It looks pretty. I love it. I'm going to do the Latisse ring band. This is one of my favorite ring bands to do. 
it's very simple. You can make the Latisse spring band look so different just by changing how you have the colors in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up, I'll move these over here some. I'm going to pick up three C beads. I have a teal on each side, and then I'm going to do a green on each side, and then a teal. Okay, just like that. Let them slide down. I'm going to pick up a green one and cross through it. Bring it down. And this is the beginning of our ring band. This is what it looks like. Okay, so with this on, I'm going to show you. From the side, you could see, actually it would be this way, if I can get it tight. Okay, now holding it like this, you can see that this is going to be the top of our ring. This is the side of our ring. It's going to lay like that on our finger. It's perfect. So I will be connecting over here to these beads. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up three beads again on each side. One teal, one green, one teal. Each side, three beads. Let those slide down. Pick up a green one and crisscross through it. Oops, it dropped. Okay, bring that down. And there's another one done. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing until I get to the length that I need. Teal, green, teal. And I always add two extra rings in case you've never made this ring band before. I always add two extra of these little rings here. Once I get the ring to fit me, I always add two more extra ones because the ring band shrinks. And when you add two more extra rings, it just makes the perfect size ring for your finger. Okay. So three C beads on each side. Pick up one and crisscross through it. Bring it down. Pull it tight and three again on each side. Okay. Slide those down, pick up a green, and crisscross through that green. Bring it down. Again, three on each side. Slide those down, pick up one and crisscross through it. I'll do this a couple more times. Three C beads on each side. Pick up one C bead and cross through. Bring it down. Three C beads again on each side. Pick up one and cross through it. Okay, and this is what I have so far. So keep going until you get to the length that you need to fit around your finger. And once you get it to fit around your finger and you can meet it up like that to the other side, then you need to add just two more of these rings, just like that. And then the ring will fit you perfectly once you get done uh, filling in the sides of it, okay? So keep going, repeating these steps, and once you do, I'll show you what to do next. So I kept on going until I got to the length I needed, and this is what it looks like right now on this side. And now I have to connect it over here, and I have to make sure that I connect it right to the other side, because if I don't, the flower will not lay straight on the ring. So studying this. I'll turn it this way. So the point is at the top, okay? Right now we are connected to these three C beads right here. I'm going to connect to these three C beads over here. These three that my fingernail are over. So at the t top we'll have five seed beads, okay? Exposed. And then at the bottom 
will have four C beads. Okay? So I have to connect to these three right here. Okay, so I'm going to take one string at a time. Holding it like this. This is the top of my ring, so I have five C beads in the top. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to pass this string through these C beads here, these three. And I might have to do these two first and then do the third one later because of how it's going through, okay? So passing through these two, pulling this through. Okay, there's my ring. Band. Now I have to pass this string here through this one C bead. And this is the part where we might need our tweezers. I had to use it on the other one, so I'll probably have to use it on this one. Okay, so there I am. These three seed beads. Now I'm going to turn this around, because I'm right-handed. I'm going to recheck this. So again, I have one, two, three, four, five seed beads there. That's the top of the ring. Okay, this is the top point. And over here... I have one, two, three, four. So here's my three. So I need this string to go through the one that this here is exiting. So I'm just going to pass through this one C bead because I can't get through all three at the same time. Okay, and I might need my tweezers here. Okay, so I got through, but it's a little tight, so I'm going to grab it with the tweezers and pull it through just enough so I can grab it with my fingers. Okay, so now I'm connected, but I have to get through these two here, and this here is the real tricky spot to get through. I actually find that fingernails are very useful in beating. <laughs> And whenever I do bead, and if I don't have my nails long enough, when I'm working on a project without a needle, I find it really hard to make something. Okay, so I'm trying to pass through these two right here. If I can just get through the first one, I could push it through the rest of the way with the needle, or with my tweezers, I mean. Okay. Okay, and I just got through. So, right there I am. Just going to pull this through the rest of the way. Now I'm going to pull my other string. And this is what I have. Okay. Those three beads connected there to the ring band. So again, you should have these four seed beads here at the bottom of your ring where you have two petals. So, one, two, three, four. And then at the top, you should have five. One, two, three, four, five, where you have this top petal, okay? So this is what the bottom of your ring band should look like. Okay, so now we got the tough part over. Now we're going to add the ring band. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my string and I'm going to pass through these two C beads here on the side through the teal and through the green one pull that through turn this around and I'm going to do the same thing over here push that through okay now I'm pulling this tight pulling this side tight now we should have this, okay? Everything's tight. Now I'm just going to go to one of my strings, doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to pick up two C beads at a time on, on my string. Exiting out of this one, I'm going to go into the next green one. So I'm skipping over two teal C beads, and I'm passing through this green one. And if I pinch it like this, that seed bead pops out and it makes it easier to pass through. Okay. So two again. 
That's what I just did. I have to pass through this next green one. So skipping over two beads through this green one. Make sure that you pull it tight because it loosens up. Picking up two more. Next thing out of here, I'm going to go through this next green one. Pull it tight. That's what I have so far. I'm going to pick up two again. I'm going to pull this green one out here. And then pass through it. And pull this tight. Okay, now I'm going to stop and go to the other side because I need it to look nice. And uh, if I did one whole side, the other side wouldn't look so nice. So I try to keep the tension uh, the same on each, each side. So I try not to go so far on one side because of the tension problem. Okay, so I just picked up two. Now I'm on this side over here and I have to pass through this green seed bead. tight. I'm going to pick up two more. I have to put them right here so I'm skipping over two seed beads and I'm putting them right here. Now I'm going to pick up two more. I'm right here. I'm going to put the under my string right here to the next green seed bead and pull that through. I'm just going to do this one more time. Two more seed beads, exiting out this green one, skipping over two, and I'm going through the next seed bead. Okay. Now I must pull both of my strings very tight so the seed beads sit beside each other properly. So now this is what it looks like. So keep going filling in the sides. This is so simple. If you have any problems just rewind the video. I'm just going to fill in the whole side over here and then when I get over here I'll show you what to do next. So keep going repeating these simple steps. So now I have to reposition these strings and get them ready to tie knots. But before I do that you might notice that this ring is totally bent out of shape. And the reason why it looks like that is because I have to pass through the beads here at the base again and come out the side. So all these here, I already did that too. They're all finished. And as you can see, they're all round. They all have round holes. So once I do that part, it'll fix the shape of the ring and it'll be round just like these here. Okay. So I might need the tweezers again. So right now, you know, I filled all the sides in. My strings are exiting out here and here of the ring band. And now what I have to do is take my strings and go down the side of the base of the ring and then come back into the ring band and I'll tie my half hitch knots here. So I'll do this side first because it's probably going to be the easier one. What I do is I, I take my fingernails and I push the C beads out so I can pass through them. And if that doesn't work, I would like to go to my tweezers and use my tweezers to push it out. Okay, I did get through this time. But if I didn't get through, what I would do is I would take my tweezers and I would lift these up and I would be able to pass through them. Okay, so I just went through those two seed beads, pulling that through. Now I have two more left over here and I'm just going to... I might have to do it on this side here. Oops. Bend this out. And pass through. It is a little tricky. There I go. Okay. It just it wants to go into the other C beads and you have to stop it from doing that. Okay. So now I went through these four green ones and now I have to go through these three C beads right here in the ring band. 
and it's tough to get through three as you can only do to this one here to the first two okay pull that through I'm gonna go through this one here and now this one is ready to tie knots with but this one over here is far from ready this one is the one that's a little harder to do because we have this one seed bead here so I tried to bend the ring band down and pull this one seed bead out with my fingernail and pass through it okay I did it that time these ones should be easier to get through because they're straight I have to lift the middle one up okay pass through these and there seems to be a little clog so what I'll do is I'll just go through the one I need my tweezers I'll just pass through this one here and I think it's just this one here that's tight There it is. I barely got it. It's barely coming out right there. Okay, got it. I did not struggle with the other ones like I did with this one. The other ones were easier. But I guess because I'm filming, I'm going to have a hard time. Okay, now I have to pass through these two. Hmm, I got through one. There's the other one. For there, and now I have one more green one to get through. Then I can go into my ring band. Okay, got through that one. And then I have these here on the side to pass through. This one went through all three. Okay, it's just like that. And now we are ready to tie our half hitch knots. So I need to make sure all of this is tight because that is what straightens or makes this round, the ring band round. So now we're ready to tie our half hitch knots. So now I'm going to show you how to tie the half hitch knots and I actually already filmed this part but it got messed up. So I have already tied a knot here between these two TLC beads and then I reposition my thread here. I don't have a knot right here right now. Okay so right here I am and I currently have a knot here so I'm just going to pass through these three beads up to where I need to tie a knot. Okay, so now I am between these TLC, two TLC beads. Now I like to tie all my knots between these two beads right here that are the same color. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to take my string. I'm going to pass underneath and I'm going to come out right here. Okay, this hole. Pull that through. I'm going to go through the loop one time. I can't pass through the loop twice because I'm using monofilament. If I was using Fireline, I could go through two times, which I would rather do. But with monofilament, you can't because the knot is too big and it's, it's able to be seen. Okay, so I just pulled that down. Okay, and now all I have to do is pass through these three beads here, pull it tight, and this knot will disappear. You will not see it. Okay. So now I'm over here and I'm going to show you how to tie the knot on this side since it's already in position. I'm going to take my string, I'm going to pass through this loop here, and then I'm going to pass through this loop one time and pull it through. Okay, make sure my knot sits there and pull this down. 
until you have focus a knot right there okay pull that tight so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass through these three C beads and tie another knot here between the teal ones so I just keep going and I tie a knot between just about all of these two C beads and I go all the way around because what is that doing it's making the ring perfectly round it's making it extremely durable because we have several passes through the ring and it's going to last for a long time. So keep going, tying your half inch knots and when you come out this side up here, that's where I snip the monofilament off because it's pointing in that direction. It will not point, uh, poke your finger. So keep going, tying your half hitch knots. This is it. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page. And follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching.